So this is little specific topic. So it's particularly for women health. So I am going to talk about uh, breast cancer specific. So our team actually designed a specific algorithm to basically get better image from the scanning. From that, radiologist can basically analyze and uh, suggest appropriate uh, treatment. So I am going to talk uh, at outline. So what is actually breast cancer burden across the country? across the world. So, and at the same time I talk one product which is already outside and I also talk about future product and how that gives benefit and performance expectations and this is more about CUDA. So, technical challenges faced by our team and our approach to the problem and I will talk about conclusions and uh, future work. So this is actually complete uh, statistics of present uh, various cancers. I hope you are able to read. You just first on the top left. So all countries are actually grouped into groups based on HDI, that is a Human Development Index. Base, various factors are considered like, like availability of health uh, facilities, like uh, living standards, like many, many things are considered education. So they group. If you see that, breast cancer is actually dominating everywhere. So if you take, uh, actually India comes under uh, medium HDI. So in our case, little, actually, actually at fourth place. And if you consider any other group, it is actually in the top. And if you see the graph, actually it is for one lakh population, if you see the graph, I think, so if you see around 75 people are actually suffering from breast cancer. And that is also in very developed countries like US, UK. And if you see everywhere, that is a common trend. If you see the other side, if you see almost uh, incidents, if you see almost uh, 16 lakhs people are suffering from breast cancer, whole world and almost uh, 5 lakhs people are passed away because of breast cancer. So if you talk about country wise, uh, actually there are a lot of cancer related things. If you see breast cancer, female, if you see 151 countries are actually suffering. And it's a top in the case of women. So if you see that we have to detect early and try to basically at least save some years of life for them. So if you see here, we lost almost, uh, if you see breast cancer specific, 60, uh, 64 million years we lost already by 2008 only. So it's very important actually to scan and find out early so that we can actually at least live for some time more. So this is about across the world and we have more statistics on India and it's a very challenging here. So if you see th this side, so fundamental problem in India is like, you know, we don't have mandatory uh, insurance. So we don't go for hospitals regularly. So that itself is a big problem. So most of the cancers, if you see 60, this is for India, this one for India, this is for cities. So 66% 60 of cancers are detected very late. So chances of living more than five years is like almost impossible. So primary reasons are like, there are plenty of reasons. So culture issue is also there, medical facilities, availability is also very, very less. So this is the one thing. And if you see in the bottom left, if you consider top five cancers, actually one fourth is actually from breast cancer. So you, you can imagine like how it is actually affecting people's life. So if you see like these are statistics year wise in 2035, by 2035 you will find for every one lakh you will find 250 members actually going to suffer with breast cancer. So 
risk, risk factors are actually, at least we have to consider two things, like giving birth for, I mean, later age, like after 30 is actually one of the risk factors for breast cancer. So I think you should inform your family members. And the other one is actually breastfeeding. That is a common problem. So I think these things at least we can control easily. Other things are also there, but these are the dominant ones. Family history, you can't anyway, anyhow, you can't uh, do some anything. But these two things actually you have to basically, you can easily basically overcome. So if you talk about like in India, if anyone is suffering, like 5% of people will actually are dying. If you take US, they are actually only 1.5% people are dying because they are able to detect they are going to consult doctor and getting information a lot earlier than us. One interesting fact you have to observe in this also, breast cancer in India. So if you consider 20 years back and present, young age, actually women are getting, are actually in more. 4% in 20 to 30, which is like too much. And if you see that more like, from 30 to 45, you see more people are actually suffering from breast cancer, which is like, we have to think about that. So this is, this is, so if you see that these are the statistics, but we know, like, we don't have proper uh, mechanism to get all the information available, because a lot of villages, we don't know on what reason they are actually really dying. So this analysis, probably it could be, you can consider that, it is more than 1.5 times than what I am, I have described here. Two times also, because a lot of... So this is all about that. And uh, actually, Philips already, it is released long back only. So it, there is a product which actually scans and gives the X-ray output. So can you play the video? So I am going to play one video, which is... give. Uh, one of the radiologists gave a feedback on this product. Excuse me, can you run the video? Uh, my name is Jean-Charles Piguet. I'm a radiologist uh, and uh, specialized since more than uh, 20 years in uh, breast imaging and uh, I've uh, been working in uh, private practice mainly uh, and some very important location where we are performing more than uh, 80 to 100 examination a day. Since the very beginning, in 2006, we started with the first uh, device of microdose. Between 2006 and 2009, we had the chance to run two different systems of microdose and another system, the R system of the competitors. Three, no, three main difference. The first one is the image quality, because 50 micron is 50 micron. The dose, less dose. And the third benefit, it's very easy to use for the technician. It's fast, it's logical, and um, the reliability is very good. And the most important thing is you don't have to change according to the size of the breasts, the positioning. They don't want to change after uh, trying it, uh, comparing to the other system. But as doctor, I like the um, image presentation, and the image quality, the easiness of use. As it's a very high definition, 50 micron, we don't need to have a, a magnifying tool. And the result is it's much easier to perform. It's easier to be in a good position and uh, it goes much faster with a very good result because you have a double of the dose just over the paddle where uh, you make the compression. What was important for us was to get a lower dose at at least the same image quality than the other system. It's even better, but uh, it, the goal was to have the, the, the lowest dose possible. Healthy women in screening are more, even in diagnostic way, are more and more concerned by uh, doses because there is a lot of publication coming out now that radiation are not too good, especially for young women. So they are very concerned now and they appreciate quite a lot to have a mammogram uh, realized on uh, half the dose. I 
could not even imagine to do work with something else by myself. You have a very easy tool to handle for the technician. Spots are very uh, easy to do, to, and uh, it's very comfortable for the woman. They are much more pleased on a curved detector than a flat one. And for the radiologist, I, I think you get just the best image uh, you can have. Single system on the market with 50 microns, as far as I know. So, uh, actually, if you see like outstanding innovations from this product, is like uh, three things, and these are very actually it is actually far away from the competitors. First one is a low dose. So, if you take any tissue in the body, if if, you, if it is exposed to high radiation, which is a big problem. So, so uh, our team actually designed a system which can actually take only, it reduces 40 percent of reduction, uh, dose reduction, which is like, like if you see many countries, you have to go through scanning every year. Some countries uh, say after 40 and after 45. So, if you are exposed multiple times in a less span of time, so that itself will cause actually some issues. So reducing dose is actually very, very important factor. That is a one of the uh, key innovation. So other one is the image quality. So uh, already in a video, they sh uh, showed that it is 50 microns. So we can represent 50 micron space into pixel. So for radiologist, it's actually like he has a lot of information to diagnose properly, not missing anything. If you miss cancer, which is more dangerous, also if you say wrongly, also it is more dangerous. So image quality, getting high image quality is actually, I mean, very critical. And the other one is actually uh, breast density measurement. This is also one of the very important thing. Uh, so it actually adds more, in, gives more information based on the composition of the breast. So from that, actually, from that information, even patient also can understand at what stage it is actually there. And for radiologist particularly, he can actually give appropriate treatment based on the, uh, this analysis. So it is uh, automatically given uh, when you take a scan. So I'll just give a brief information. So if you see that uh, this is a computer, this one is computers and this one is Philips. So you see a huge difference in dose. So because of image quality, so dose and image quality actually goes in opposite direction. If you reduce the dose, you get less image quality. But here we managed both. So detect, if you have a good image quality, you can actually find out detection rate will be higher. So that is also very important. So this is all about 2D. So now I think everywhere we are moving towards 3D. So similarly, here also in medical industry also, we are actually moving towards uh, 3D. So the fundamental advantage of uh, 3D is like in a 2D scan, you are going to miss some hidden uh, objects. It's a very simple concept. So now if you construct complete object in 3D, so you have more information. So even hidden cancer tissues also can be easily found. So that is uh, one of the primary advantage. So we get uh, slices of information, so which actually increases the detection rate and uh, recall rate means if radiologists are actually completely confused or unclear that whether you have, they have a cancer or not, then they have to call back. So that call back rate will be reduced, which is also very critical. So while designing all these things, actually uh, we designed algorithm that is a tomographic reconstruction algorithm. So it's a statistical iterative algorithm and multi-stage. The fundamental problem with this algorithm is it takes a huge amount of time, which is actually a big problem. So we achieved low dose, we achieved best image quality and dense, uh, breast density, but we are actually having a poor performance so this 
Uh, I hope uh, everybody able to see bottom ones. So if you see, we actually run this algorithm. We optimize this algorithm on CPU with uh, OpenMP and SSE. After optimizations also, you see, uh, so number of slices will vary based on the uh, size of the breast. So if you take average breast, so on four core system, we are actually takes around 2.5 minutes. So which is actually too much. Uh, why this is very important, I'll, go, I'll explain in the later. And we also ran in on 12 core CPU. So it takes around 1.5 minute, which is actually too much. So this was a, a big challenge. I mean, every uh, radiologist is actually very happy about the quality of the image we are getting, the dose we are applying, but they were very unhappy because it is taking too much time. You have to wait a lot. So fundamental, why actually that is very important. So, so regular scannings are mandatory in many countries. So, you, so hospitals expect more scans per day. And radiologist requires minimum four scan images to analyze properly. So two for right, right breast and two for left. So for each projection, if it takes 2.5 minutes, it, they can actually, I mean, for, four, for one patient, they have to spend around 10 minutes. I'm not talking about other things. This is only time taken by algorithm itself. So there, there are a lot of other things, like they, you have to call patient inside. They have, you have to ask a lot of questions. Then you have to make system ready. So there are a lot of other things also, which, which is like, Optimizing is possible, but that is somebody else can do. But here we have to optimize. And another one is, so it has to, generally these scannings are, if you see the vehicle, so these scannings are also done outside hospitals also. So the other important thing is, system should be compact. Actually, you have seen in the video, system is very big. So, and it should be energy efficient. So if you see the performance, and if you see these constraints, you have to find out some solution which actually, like it will be compact, and it is actually energy efficient. So, so what we found only one solution, like go with CUDA. So it's a small device which can be kept in a PCA slot, and which gives a lot of performance, and it is energy efficient, and it's a compact. So these were the challenges. So our team from Bangalore, we took the initiation and uh, we started optimizing and we achieved the results. I'll, I'll discuss more and more. So challenges we have, we had is like how to optimize better. So we have four resources, CPU, system RAM, and uh, transfer between CPU and GPU, and GPU resources. So this is one of one part. Another part is uh, image quality assessment. So we are porting to different hardware, and uh, medical law are, is very strict. You have to give, you have to document for everything. It is yes or no. You have to document. So we have to prove that whatever we were getting in CPU, you have to get the same thing. So when you port, you face a lot of problems. So first one is a different algorithm approaches. So fundamental problem is like you are paralyzing. So obviously you take some problem, then you try to look for memory access, then output, you more concentrate on how I efficiently I can access memory. That is the first thing. How can I use more threads? I mean collaboratively. So when you start doing this, you change algorithm. When you change algorithm, one example is like you are averaging 10 by 10 pixels. Probably averaging 8 by 8 is better option. When you do that change, immediately it impacts the output. So you have to make sure that whatever like performance and quality, you have to actually make sure that it is balanced. But how do you prove? It is like very important aspect. So that is a, one of the fundamental challenge when we port it. So other one is a programming errors. So it's a very common. 
any software has problem. So you are dealing with thousands of threads, so you are going to make some mistakes. So you have to, that is a one of the, these three categories are actually major uh, issues we actually encountered. The other one is a precision issues. Actually both hardware supports CPU and GPU, they follow IEEE standard. But the primary problem is not from the hardware. Primary problem is the program errors. Like you in a CPU, you might have written in double, but you think about performance, you just write in float. And at the end, you see the huge results. And you see that hardware is doing wrong. So, so, so you have to do careful analysis like, is this a really hardware issue or it is a programming issue? So these are the broad categories we, fa we actually encountered. So our approach is like, so as it is a very big algorithm, so we have like, like you have a less time also, so like quick development versus more control on optimization. So you have to create a balance because you have to release the product also very early. So that was one of the, I mean like, decision you have to take, you have to take. So we took a mixed one. We went uh, some part with Trust, we went some part with CUDA because we want to do, experiment both of them. So the other challenge is like, where to start? Should we port everything to CUDA? Like what is the best approach? So here, what I'm briefing here, what, what worked well for us? So it may not work for you. I'm sure that most cases this will be the best approach at a high level. So first one is you, I'll give more details uh, with one example later. At a broad high level, so you draw flowchart of existing algorithm. So you have to keep, make sure that you are noting down all data dependencies, which is like critical. If you know exactly data dependencies, you can decide which resource is right, actually best for you to port that particular step. So other one is the execution of time, execution time for each step. So check for uh, duplicate work and unnecessary work. So when you port it, you rearrange too much. Like it, it happens because when you first time write code, generally you make sure that my output is correct. But when you start optimizing, you re rearrange too much. So you make sure that you un like eliminate all the duplicate work and unnecessary work. Draw a complete flow chart with time of time ex uh, execution time and data dependencies. Then relook your flow chart again. Rearrange steps based on following resources like CPU, transfer between CPU to GPU and GPU resources. So, and then you decide which part of the code has to go to GPU. So, and then of course you have to test for correctness and performance. So I'll give one example. Uh, one of the stage, our algorithm has lots of stages and uh, each stage, uh, before going to the next stage, you have to compute everything because dependency is there. So I have, I have eliminated all the confidential part. So I have one stage, you have set of inputs and you get set of outputs. And I have 11 steps in one of the, simp this is the simplest stage in, in our algorithm. So you have 11 steps, all are going in as one after the other. So in the, I said you rearrange based on uh, two things, uh, data dependencies and execution time. So after rearranging that each step, it was looking like this. So you see that you, you consider that each vertical line can run independently because there is no dependency between these two vert vertical lines. But there is a small dependency, eighth stage output actually required by, uh, ninth stage requires output of eighth stage. So once you draw this flow chart, you get a clear picture of like which stage is actually taking a lot of time, what is the dependency. So you can easily decide which part has to be moved to GPU. So based on this analysis, 
So if you move here, I'm, I was clear that, that these are the stages I have to move to uh, GPU. So there are situations where sometimes uh, there is an algorithm which is like some part of the code depends on one of the stage and which is very small and you can't parallelize well. So you have such cases you have no option, you have to write in GPU. So if you see here, so why I have, we have to decide like this because CPU is also one of the major resource in our product. So I have to make sure that I am using all the resources at a given time, at a maximum possible. Uh, so that is the reason like we decided that we port that into GPU and remaining all are running on CPU. So at the end, both will join at the same time, more or less, may not be all this time too. So this is a like one, I think, a good idea you can take while porting to CUDA. So these, these are the conclusions. So now we experimented with the different uh, CPUs and uh, different uh, GPUs. So I'll go one by one from the, uh, if you see the graph, bottom one is a four core, sorry, top one is a four core and then 12 core, then with the third one is from the top is for M5000 card, uh, last one is uh, from uh, M6000 card. If you see here, the performance improvement we got on average above five, five times. So it runs faster, very fast, like 2.5 minute, 2 minutes become actually half second, half, half minute, which is like very good improvement. So like basically we take average case. Average case is like we actually achieved more than what our client and our marketing team is expecting today. So I'll, I'll talk about future also. So, so in future, I mean like, as I so told, we used Thrust also in the, but Thrust is actually very useful when you want to develop very fast, but it has the limitations also. You have to decide, I can't, say 100% that Thrust is better than this or CUDA is better than It is purely based on your situation. So we felt that because we actually need to improve a lot. So replacing Thrust with CUDA APIs because few limitations, there are plenty of limitations, but two things we felt is very important. What is One is multi-GPU. We wanted to go, move to multi-GPU and asynchronous behavior. So the other one is uh, porting to multi-GPU. After doing all these things with uh, different hardware, we experimented. And after that, we realized that decomposing into multi-GPU is actually gives more performance. So that is the one. And uh, fine-tuning fine existing uh, CUDA kernels. So one thing you have to keep in mind is like don't go straight away and take one part and try to optimize too much on G, uh, particularly for a given kernel. It, it is better you do first at application level and put out all, most of the CUDA documents tells clearly this way only. So you always try to optimize resources at a higher level first, then you go down instead of like starting from the down because you waste a lot of time and then you don't see any improvement. So this is, I think I'm too fast. So any questions? Right. Right. So, Making we are not, we are not getting the speed up. No, why, our fundamental. So, I have clearly, I have three resources. 
So first resource is CPU because we have to use CPU because there are a lot of other applications. It's a serial code. Yes. Yeah. So if you, I mean like I'm doing actually sum of 1000 elements. So it's like I can assign that to uh, eight, like 500 threads first time. So they sum two together. Next time I assign for 256 threads. Next time I assign like again half, again half. So it is, will be faster than definitely serial code. I hope you... Multi-core is enough. Multi-core or Xeon oh, architecture. We have lots enough. of competition. It's like on a CPU already we optimized for vectorization. We optimized with OpenMP. So we have used all the possible things on CPU, but still it was taking 2.5 seconds. 2.5 so, minutes. 2.5 minutes, sorry. So like from there we got actually all so five times. Seconds. So like 25 seconds here. So yes, like, yes, it is actually a statistical algorithm and it has a lot of iteration, iterative algorithm also. So lots of competition is there. Combining the threads will be faster. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. great. Thank you so much, Angama.